to turn the heating up. I have to take the needs of all my residents into account. Ian's nice, isn't he? <laughs> I've tried to tell her you should have Ian all of the time, but guess what she says? All my staff must know all the residents. I don't want to upset her. Obvious reasons. You're here. Mm -hmm. and I'm not. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, darling. It won't be long. That's what I'm working towards. That's what all these years have been about. Your dad can call me Walter Mitty all he likes, but you know that's not true. I am on the verge of a breakthrough, and you, you will be my first human trial. Just got to get through the next hurdle, that's all. Imagine what it would be like if you could say mummy or mum. I keep forgetting how old you are. Or if you could lift your hand up to scratch your nose. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <coughs> it's just such a delicious dream. Has your dad been to see you yet? The lights fade to give the impression that Candido will continue chatting to Bertie for some time. too many issues into the mix. Aruna, you can be the wife and Adam uh, take the husband. I know it's not my place to just say so, but um, wouldn't it be more um, appropriate <laughs> if Jess played the wife? Well, she has a more scientific bent of mind, more likely to be interested in this kind of thing. I'm a classically trained actor. I can feign enthusiasm for anything. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best, yes. Now, your character, uh, Aruna, is a career woman. Um, What's she to be, eh? Mm. A banker. <laughs> yes, good, good. Upper middle class, then. Um, name? Uh, Daniela. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds more like a romantic novelist. No, no, never mind, never mind. Husband's not doing so well. Let's find him a job. He, he's, he's a tummy, like, not right in the head after a rock, you know? No, no, that complicates things. Where would they have met, for example? No, he has to come from a posh family too. I can't think of an upper class dude not doing well. Maybe he's just living off his wife. If she's an investment banker... No, no, no. He's a man with self-respect. <laughs> so? What century do you live in? Uh, he's an aspiring writer. What sort of work is that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, OK, OK, that could work. The husband's a writer. Daniela's in her early 40s. She's left it too late for babies. Has been a bit of a, how shall I put it, a bone... <laughs> Not enough of a bone, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> a bone of contention between the two, more like a rust running sore, because Jeremy, yes, well, Jeremy is keen on children. I'm to be Jeremy, am I? Jeremy the boneless one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if that's all right. Somebody had to earn a living. Well, Daniela, the one with the bonus. Uh, couldn't they have lived the rest of their lives on her bonus? Well, what if the husband likes the high life? Look, we can leave... That kind of detail to the actors, yes? Yeah. So, 
Her biological clock is ticking. Life at home is a battlefield. She decides to get a little help, fertility, drugs, IVF, whatever it takes. And Jeremy, he's so delighted, he sells some of his family's stocks and shares so that she can relax on her maternity leave. Now, guess what? She becomes pregnant. Bingo! But for some reason best known to herself, she continues drinking and smoking. Hey! What? Well, it's all the woman's fault. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I mean. Maybe she's stressed. Maybe she's afraid she won't get her old job back. Maybe the husband's stressing her out. Maybe, <laughs> although he's doing his best, sorting out their financial worries. Maybe he's the unfaithful type. That's not in the scenario. <laughs> they have a baby, but all that smoking and drinking has made the baby too small. Stress alone can affect fetal growth. She doesn't have <coughs> to smoke and drink as well. Yeah, that rings true, but stress can also make you want to drink and smoke. Oh, you? hello. Broken up with Mike again? I've yeah. told you. Yeah, that. yeah, lover boy. Oh, I'm uh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> as you were saying, the baby's too small. Yes, and um, too weak to survive labour. Oh, no. Yeah, no. the baby no. live. Yeah. 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 yeah, let the baby live. All right, all right, all right. Gosh, you're a sentimental lot. But look, it was a difficult birth. It's bound to be brain damaged, disabled in some way. No. Oh. No. Hey. You're right, Darren. There's nothing wrong with that. Fine. He turns out not to be able to do anything for himself. Can't sit, can't feed himself, can't even roll over. Daniela's back at work within three months. Oh, well, yes, and she's left the baby with Jeremy, has she? Ah, oh, when we are born, we cry that we are come into this great stage of <laughs> King Lear at four seasons. <laughs> Dearest Aruna, if you spout one more bit of Shakespeare, <laughs> what will you do, sweetie pie? Look, the lass has got enough brass to pay for someone to take care of the bear. Ah, oh, but Jeremy won't have it. He was, oh, bullied by nannies in his childhood, perhaps. Well, he's a writer. He can work around the baby. I don't have a baby, but fuck me if we can get on with it. She then <laughs> works from nine to nine in the week. It must be so tough on her. And spends the weekend on the net chasing all kinds of cures, traipsing up and down the country, meeting all manner of Oh, with the baby? Oh, well, with or without the baby, depending. Oh, well, if that isn't a male chauvinist scenario, then I don't know what is. Ah, uh, but you love it really, don't you? Hello? Am I talking English or what? You are spot on, Jess. We pick up the story at the point at which Daniela has discovered gene therapy. No, no, not gene therapy. Stem cell therapy, a vital distinction. Oh, okay, okay. The point is what matters is that the science is in its infancy <laughs> and her faith in it is no more than a pipe dream. Rubbish, she's done her research thoroughly. Yeah, but should we be spending the taxpayers' money chasing pipe dreams and fattening the pharma companies? Hmm? Failure is a necessary first step to success, especially in science. Remember the cystic fibrosis gene? Hmm? Yes. Remember excitement? Mm. Malfunction in a single gene, they, they thought a cure was just around the corner. Right. That yeah. was 1989. First it was years. centuries before we understood gravity. Uh, and the apples have been not... Knock a dude on the head. Yeah. Before <laughs> we got that. Exactly. Exactly. And it took centuries before Darwin came along. Yes, so but, but the way scientists experience time is out of touch with real, ordinary, mortal time. Oh, I can hear time's winged chariot drawing near as well as the next person. Oh, poetry too. Hmm? I would very much appreciate the chance to put the facts right. You get your chance. No, they need the facts now, before the drama. Please, it'll influence their decisions. Yeah, she's right. Let me explain the way it works. As the actors develop the scenario that I have laid out for them, all you have to do is shout stop, and then take over the role of any of the characters and take the action in a different direction. No, but I thought I was only a spectator. No, I have elevated you. You will be a spect actor. <laughs> your chance to influence the action and the debate. You can jump right in. I can't be fairer than that. Now, uh, if you're the husband and wife, we need... This time. Thank you for volunteering. I do my own for playing myself. <laughs> I'm not being stretched. Stretched? No, I'm not playing, lad. You're not big enough job in your hands speaking clearly. Hello, but my... Oh, I'll leave that up to you, Darren. Um, isn't she too old to be a mother? There's no offence, like. Dad! I'm a trained Shakespearean actor. Yes, we know! God, how we know! <laughs> given, your views, given your views on science, would you even seek out all these cutting-edge cures? Well, I might not, but 
Daniela, Daniela obviously will. Uh, we're going to need Dr. Allsop, because Daniela will have to discuss her options with someone who actually knows what they're talking about. She's absolutely right. I'm in. I'll play myself. Mm. That could skew the result. It's meant to be an objective test of public opinion. But your group's bright enough to make up their own minds on how to present the information, surely, no matter what I say. Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. Right. Here we are. A bowler hat and umbrella for Aruna, <laughs> and a rattle for Darren. <coughs> and six years old. Okay, you want something more appropriate? Um, <laughs> an iPad, perhaps. <laughs> or John. And you're 12. The younger the better, the more chance of a cure. Okay, it's Teddy for you then, Darren, and here's the remote. Now, a block of wood or a pen and, pa or a pen and pad for you, Adam. Cool, throw me the writer's block. Right. <laughs> First action. Dad. <clears> hmm? <throat> Keep trying. Dad! What? Tell you. How can I write with you calling every two minutes? But, uh, what? You're 12, not 4, Darren. You're allowed to speak in sentences. <laughs> not so helpless now, are you? Can't hear. You're not blind, are you, though? You got writer's block. I know I've got writer's block. You get a different. Just, just watch your prayer. Oh, little Baba, what's upsetting you? Sitting and watching telly all day. It's not good for him. True. Shh. We've done loads today. Walked in the park, fed the ducks. He's just winding down. How can you be so insensitive, Jeremy? What? Making him watch dancing. <laughs> he asked for it. It's his favourite programme. Oh, sweetheart, is he? <laughs> it now, boss. Of course, darling. Where's the remote? No, boss. I can't work with music playing. He got the block. Ah, oh, he's got the block again. <laughs> hey, guys, it's not like I'm constipated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Let's just get sidetracked, darling. So where were we? Oh yes, Jeremy. I've asked you how your day was. You might want to ask me how the markets were today. Actually, you didn't ask how my day was. You assumed how it was, and then you told us off. <laughs> how? Oh, off? I never would never tell him off. Well, that might be a problem, oh. don't you think? Well, John can't do anything, so why would I tell him off? What would you know? You only see him for five minutes before he goes to bed. Oh, what? I'd love to stay at home. Oh, would you? Would you really? Fine. I'll go away on a writing retreat and you stay at home and take care of him. You know I can't. My job pays me for all this. Pays us for all this. <laughs> oh, that's one in the gut. Please, can we just stop? It's the same conversation every day. I'm really tired. Okay, okay, sorry. It's frustrating for me too, you know, not getting time to myself. I said we'd get some help in, but you won't hear of it. I mean, I'm happy to pay for no, it. No, no, it's fine, I'll manage. How were the markets? Jittery. <laughs> so, how was that? Did you like the way we shaped it? Um, the power couple, the way they make up, talking about the markets, that's their love talk. Is it? Sounds like their marriage is on the rocks. <laughs> oh, nothing more than daily stretches and strains of domestic life. Uh, Aruna, you forgot to set up the next scene, though. Oh, God. <laughs> We're going to see the doc tomorrow, who might make you better. Yet another weekend taken up with quacks. I said doc, not duck. Uh, <laughs> at least I'm trying. I wish you wouldn't. Will I be able to die, Mum? One step at a time, my love. You see how keen he is. It will break him, this, this lifting and dashing of hope. If we don't, we won't find. 
End of first action. Right, excellent guys. Now, moving on. Uh, here's a white coat and glasses for you, candidate. Mm, let's not have stereotypes hold us back. Okay, folks. Second action. <coughs> Adam, ready? Oh, uh, right, right. Good. And Q. Come in, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Oh, Smith. Oh, Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Smith and little John. Please, sit down. <laughs> ah. <coughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to see us. We're so excited to be here. Aren't we, John? <coughs> what can I do for you? Well, that's what we're here to find out. I've read all about you in the papers, on the net. Oh, OK, that's good. You have some background information. <laughs> but they don't. Uh, well, one day I should be able to inject stem cells, the cells that can become any organ, into John's brain and help to repair damaged tissue. When, Doctor? That's what I'd really like to know. I can't say exactly. See? I told you, Daniela, we're chasing rainbows. John's 12, <clears throat> and he has no movement in his wrist. Um, yeah. That gives us more time. <laughs> I mean, would he be able to walk and use his hands better? And and talk more clearly. Well, that's the hope. If the damaged brain cells are replaced, the signal to the limbs will become more normal. Where will you get the stem cells from? The newborns, is that right? <laughs> stem cells can be obtained from a variety of different sources. You can get them from newborns, from the umbilical cord, but where that is collected, it's usually reserved for the baby itself, a sort of insurance policy against future injury. I've been reading up about this too. I hear they're using embryos. Now, I personally don't have a problem with that. I'd do anything for John. But Jeremy here is a committed Christian. Am I? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's against abortions. This is character assassination. Hang on a minute. <laughs> <clears throat> We're talking about surplus embryos, like after IVF or spontaneous miscarriages. Natural waste being put to good use. It's not like we're going around harvesting babies with coat hangers, you know. It's a little gross messing about with human babies, though, isn't it? Yes, he's a bit queasy about these things. If they are not babies. They're embryos. Anyway, I have news for you. We no longer need to use embryos. We can reprogram adult cells, turn them into stem cells, which can then be turned into any part of the body. Really? Yes, really. What, like skin cells? Yes. You mean the ones that we spend our time hoovering up? You mean I do? <laughs> yes. What's wrong with that, Jeremy? I read that it is better to use real embryonic stem cells. Uh, you're sounding very clued up for someone who hates science. Yeah, yeah. We can all change our minds. <laughs> As I was saying, when the Daily Mail says that they can take a skin cell and turn it into an embryonic stem cell, then turn it into a neuron, a brain cell, it's not true. We're a long, long way from that. You probably saw the short film on my work with mice. Made my stomach churn. Did it? Well, I reversed brain damage in those mice using skin cells. Human skin? Shh. No. Mice skin. <laughs> <laughs> They're known as induced pluripotent stem cells, IPS. Stop! Stop! What? Stop! My jargon sensor is beeping. All it means is, when a cell starts off... When a cell starts off pluripotent, that is, a stem cell, it can turn into anything. Bone, skin, brain. But, when it gets more and more specialised, becomes bone, skin, brain, you can't go backwards. At least, you couldn't, once. Induced pluripotence simply means forcing a specialised cell, that is, the cell that is bone, skin or brain, forcing it to go backwards into a stem cell, OK? Yes. I've been doing my homework too, Candida. I understand that the winding back bit turned out to be relatively simple, didn't it? Uh, well, don't forget, everybody thought it was impossible oh, yeah, at the... Can't, can't, can't. But the difficult bit was actually the winding fall, wasn't it? We start off with a fertilized egg, and nine months later, we have a fully functional baby. Problem is, 
we really don't know how a stem cell becomes bone, skin, or brain, do we? So we can't engineer it, QED. Isn't the debate meant to be going, taking place inside the play? Oh, as an audience member, I have every right to debate the issues. Adam? Oh, yes, right. <clears throat> I hear that these stem cells can go mad, turning to an aggressive, cancerous tumour. But when you're a tetraplegic or a paraplegic, then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have pleasure. I'm a proper pleasure. Yeah. Um, no, no. Darren, um, you can't use words like quadriplegic when you're six. But <laughs> <laughs> Darren, I am not making a statement <laughs> about your disability. I am not. Is he in the character? Are we still in the there, 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 there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's all soft, lad. It's only a bit of acting. <laughs> Darren, I'm sorry. I'm very... Darren, you... May be very happy to be in a wheelchair, but but there are no ramps to the top of Everest. <laughs> Can we move on? No. <laughs> I haven't finished yet. There are many people who would quite like to be able to use their legs. And as a scientist, I feel it is my job, my vocation, to use my knowledge to make that possible. I think one in my wheelchair and more Never seen you drunk. Never seen you touch a drop of the stuff, son. I have got one. Oh. Anybody would think that I was arguing for life-shortening remedies. We scientists are subjected to unprecedented levels of scrutiny. High standards of safety are required for any new treatment. And so it should be. None of my mice developed tumours. But they could. Oh. I, I read about a woman. Yes. She had stem cell therapy for her kidneys and she died. It is impossible to ensure that a drug or treatment does not have a death rate of one in 100,000. You can't have <coughs> such big clinical trials. I understand. The costs are too high. A <laughs> uh, cost shouldn't come into it when a, a human life is concerned. Now, perhaps I could pay something towards the cost. Dan, get up. <laughs> in the full of trials, they've already had Dan, could you just get back into character? This has become a free-for-all. Aren't there rules to observe? Aren't we making a play? No, no, quite, quite, quite right, quite right. Um, and it, it, this is important. Stem cells can be very sexy, but it's mostly hype and hot air. Like the stuff on jeans. Don't mix them up, please. No, I'm making a point about hype. Uh, a, a gene for violence. A gay gene. A gene for this, a, a gene for that. I'm gay, he's straight. Is the difference between me and him just one G? We're going off point. Then what about the environment? What about nurture? What about choice? This is us wanting to shrug off responsibility for our actions by blaming our G. He's right, he's right. We want iPads, we want Blackberries, we want four-wheel tanks for cars, three foreign holidays a year, and when our system belches foul air, what do we do? We hope to manufacture microbes that will eat up the greenhouse gases. Synthetic biology. Cynthia to the rescue. By changing, our, by changing our lifestyles. Oh no, no way, not negotiable. Why shouldn't scientists be around to pick up the pieces? Exactly. We are a natural counterbalance to human frailty. What I'm saying is it's wrong to click our fingers and look to science to save the day. Yes, well, hoping for a mass change of behaviour is living in cloud cuckoo land. It's not going to happen. The back to nature movement is an illusion. Somebody has to find a cure. We changed social behaviour around smoking, didn't we? Can you imagine lighting up in bed or in a car nowadays? Nobody smokes in their pregnancy nowadays, do they, Candy? Excuse us. What are you playing at? Candy, don't. Candy, don't. Calm down. I am calm. Shh. Why are you doing this? What? What am I doing? How dare you? How dare you parade our lives in front of these strangers? I gave the scenario. Yeah, based on us. Well, they're often based on reality. You mean your fucked up version of reality? What happened to imagination? Oh, you indulging my imagination. Only when you imagined that every single woman was after you. Ah, jealous. Hardly. So what are you flouncing about for? You should be grateful I let you put the scientific case. Do me a favour. I may be many things, but I'm not stupid. What are you talking about? The whole thing. It's a setup. Why would I do that? You fed that half-wit, Adam, every single line. He doesn't know science from his arse. That's and what it... you used to say about me. So how could I have fed him oh. every... 
I know you, Tarquin, down to your missing hair follicles. Oh, flatter. You'll go to any lengths. I won't stand by and watch you destroy my life's work. It's not all or nothing with you, isn't it? There's no sense of proportion. It's called passion. But what would you know about that? This is a proposal <clears throat> for a new experiment. You know what this means to me, to us, to Bertie. You want to destroy him, to get back at me. How sick can you be? Hey, hey, no way are you getting away with that. I'm the one who gave up my career to look after Bertie, whilst uh, you went prancing around. You didn't have a career. In the arts, no one has a career. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the, the sciences are essential to human well-being, unlike the arts. Well, who needs who now? Bertie needs you. I am a realist. I always have been. What does that even mean? Does being a realist mean living without hope? I went along with what you wanted. Oh, so it's all my fault now. You knew pretty soon now. There was no way we were never going to help Bertie, but the glamour, it was all too much. Glamour? Glamour? <laughs> hours and hours of staring into a petri dish. All that press coverage, posing for pictures, you lapped it up. No wiping off Bertie's saliva from your clothes for you. Oh, no. Now, that is not fair. I did my bit at the weekends. You got a lion, didn't you? Oh, you'd have liked a lion. Well, I'd have liked a pain-free back. Yeah, well, that's not Bertie's fault, is it? That, that's all those Karma Sutra positions you use to impress the ladies. <laughs> you, you were always the hardest to impress, Candy. Oh, God, you're a bastard. I've missed our rouse, Candy. Really? Like a hole in the head? No, 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 really. Come back. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> if only you'd credited me with such power when we were together. Oh, <laughs> right. So the wife emasculates her husband and then to regain his power, he goes out looking for Totty. Oh, please, this is not Oprah. I have finished with what you call Totty. Oh, or are they finished with you? I wonder why. Is it the hair loss, do you think? The circle of shiny skin, the paunch, eh? What's driving them away? Or is it that magnificent quality you have yeah. of crushing people's oh, hopes? Oh, you get better and better. Tarquin, if you want revenge, find another way. It's too late, Canada! That's what I'm trying to tell you. What, what's your best hope? How long before this treatment becomes available, assuming everything goes well? Four years, top whack. My boy will be 25 years old. It's too late, too no. long. No, no, it's not. Uh, no, look, I'm, I'm doing this for your own good. Yeah, ha, bloody ha. You're kidding yourself. Take your head out of the sand. I told you it's for your own good. Really? Since when have you been interested in my good? Uh, Always had your best interest at heart. Yeah, well, I don't have time to dig that deep. It's on my sleeve, sweetheart, on my sleeve. Brush against it and it gets Oh, rude. so you go on the rampage against Stop me. Stop shouting for God's oh, sake, they'll hear you. They will now! Hello! I want you to change the scenario so that Daniela does not smoke and drink through her pregnancy. It's the truth. Is this supposed to be a play? I hope you're stealing my lines now. What's in it for me? Bertie's future. I never really believed that. The future of all such children, born and unborn. You're clutching at straws. My good opinion of you. Ah. Now we're talking. <laughs> wow. You nearly had me there. I have my integrity to think of. Oh, fuck you. When you play it in front of the jury, I <coughs> want you to leave out the smoking and drinking. It's too loaded against the woman. Well, does Tarkin agree? Look, it's not about men and women. The point is about our lifestyles, about responsibility, about who picks up the pieces. Well, you know, perhaps if Daniela's story was more developed. Oh, if you want more story, a backstory, oh, I'll give you more backstory. If you want new ones, I'll give you new ones. Candidate. No, you've pushed me. To the two of you know each other. Oh, yes, very well. Candidate. This man is my ex-husband. <laughs> We're not divorced yet. Uh-oh, this just got a little bit incestuous, didn't it? <laughs> oh, that's not the half of it. That scenario, that pathetic little fiction that this man paraded in front of you, your drama from your workshop leader, that was based on our life. Cruel, distorted version, but on our life. I have spent the last 20 years of my life looking for a cure for our son. Our son, Bertie. Bertie. He's like Darren, except much worse. He can't even talk. Who's rotting in a home, has been rotting for the last six years. 
She was on a hiding to nothing. No, because you gave him up. You spotted this job in the papers. Now who's distorting the truth? Bertie had become too big for us. Oh, for me, I did my back in. That's utter rubbish. He did his back in when I came home from work and found him in bed with a young woman, one of the would-be actresses, who mistakenly thought he could give a leg up to her career, but actually he was just getting his leg over. That's champion. He got out of bed so fast. And then something inside him snapped. Exactly, and something inside me snapped too. Sorry. Me? Did you find him? No, he said. Lad wants to know. Did you smoke a drink, mate? Dad? She might not have understood. Oh, she understood all right. <coughs> Why else would our articulate scientist lose her ability to speak? She spent her whole life trying to undo it. Surely she should be given some credit for that. What about you, Tarquin? Trying to block her research? This is better than EastEnders. Where's the popcorn? Nothing like a vengeful or water all over your work. Thank you. Not at all. What kind of father would do that? Closing all the doors on his own son, just to punish his wife? What an ungrateful bunch you are. All I've done to keep this drama group going. <laughs> Ready to go with any stranger who pulls at your heartstrings. Okay. Well, let's bungle this into our play and let the audience decide. <laughs> Candida stands by the same shabby sofa as before. We have done it, we have done it, we have finally done it. I said I would, and I have, I have. I've never let you down, have I? Get ready, I am going to change your life. Oh, mind you, it was touch and go at first. Oh, we show the socks a bit weak. I know. Um, you know, we'll be okay on our own. Oh, Bertie. I had to wash a lot of dirty linen in public, though. Our linen. <laughs> <laughs> the actors went for it. God, it's strange, isn't it? Oh, what gets people going? You can put all the rational arguments in front of them. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, they've moved like hell they are. And then one little bit of a human story falls into the place and they're eating out of your hand. God, I can't tell you how fantastic I feel. I went out and bought this. What do you think? Do you like it? Well, I didn't actually go shopping. I was waiting for a cab, and from the corner of my eye, I spotted this purple number in the window. You know, I'm a sucker for purple. Just knew it would look good. Walked in, paid for it, rushed out, and as luck would have it, someone was just stepping out of a cab. I slept for 16 hours afterwards. It was bliss. Can you believe it? Never done that before. Didn't even eat anything. Couldn't keep my eyes open. Didn't wake up till 10. Oh, that's why I'm a bit late today, sorry. I haven't done that since I went on a bender after graduating from Cambridge. God, that was a bloody long time ago. The extensively kitted out reception area of biotech company. A stylish logo, Orpheus Biotech, hangs on an opaque glass partition. Greg and Candida are sitting on a plush sofa. Isn't this your job? God, I take some lip from you. <laughs> Which certainly not in my job description. No, it's not in mine either. I've done my bit. Been to hell and back. The jury voted for the research. 60%, double what the Tories got. Aren't you glad you stuck with it? <coughs> what was it you called them? The hoi polloi? Ah, oh, but I'm a convert now, Greg. Oh, yeah, because they voted for you. No, I'm not that superficial. They did actually make me think about things. Question my own assumptions. We need checks and balances. Hmm. I like the modest new candida. Glad you're on board, because that's the way we're all heading now. Mm, it does slow you down, though. And you're a woman in a hurry. Look, let's just focus on one thing at a time, shall we? The head of R&D here wants clarification on parts of your proposal. I thought my work was being funded by the MIC, not by Big Pharma. 
not enough money nowadays for blue skies thinking, Candida. Blue skies thinking? I have reverse brain damage in mice, haven't I? It's all about time scale and applied research nowadays. You mean you sold your soul to the private sector? Look, do you or don't you want to do this research? Yes, but... There aren't any buts about it. We've got to go where the money is. I asked you specifically, and you categorically said that I... Things change. You lied to me. The kind of money this project needs. You're only going to get that from venture capitalists. (laughs) Why would they be interested? Where's the profit? In our case, there'll be no mass production of drugs. My work deals with bespoke therapies. That's the big pharmaceuticals. They want to sell drugs. This isn't a pharmaceutical. This is a biotech company. They want to patent your methods for taking pluripotent stem cells and turning them into neurons. That's where they're going to make their money, the intellectual property. Well, I haven't quite got that process pinned down. That's what they want to talk about. Right. It's all about the people. If you sound like you can deliver, that'll reassure them. I can do that. I know, but they're not so hard on the science stuff. Oh, so that's why you brought me along, to inspire confidence in the project. Stick me to the front of the ship, why don't you? Let's hope it's not a sinking one. Look, I've got full confidence in you. If you could swing a group of ordinary Joes with an ex-husband breathing down your neck, well, I've got a... Well, he did his best, and for once his best was not good enough. He should have known when to call it a day. By the way... I want you to take some action against Tarquin. Why? There was a conflict of interest. Can you prove it? Yes, I can. He's not going to have a job very long anyway. No, this is a question of principle. What is it? Is there any point in telling you? I'll probably have more luck going through the official channels or Arturo or the Ethics Committee or something. What have you got? Share certificates. Yes? Tarquin shares. Yeah, I remember you saying something about that. Found them under the bed when I was doing a clear-out last night. Not the kind of thing I've been expected to find under his Shares bed. in Cynthia Cells Limited. So? Don't you see? They're rivals. This lot, Orpheus Biotech and Cynthia. Cynthia are hoping to produce synthetic neurons. <laughs> Obviously, they'd want to scupper the real stuff. The moment I saw those shares... I knew what was going on. So there was nothing personal in Tarquin's little game at all. It was money, not revenge. Mm. Shame. I was flattered in a strange kind of way. (laughs) 